So then you have questions about probabilities and statistics. So typically in this example, Charles, who is also working at DSTI, will take two exams, one on probabilities and one on statistics. And you have two events, A, which is you will fail the probabilities exam, and B, you will fail the statistics exam. And the question is, what is the probability to pass at least one of the two exams? So for this kind of thing, the idea is that you can use potatoes. So this is A and this is B. So A is you fail the probabilities and B is you fail the statistics. And then you can look at the events, for instance, A or B. A or B is this thing here. You fail the probability exam or you fail the statistics exam or you fail both of them. So typically, because the question is pass at least one of both exams, you see that it will not be A or B. Because in A or B, you have the case here where you have both A and B, which means fail both exams, which is not what you want. And inside A or B, you don't have the case where you pass both of them. So we can try to look at the other propositions to see if it seems to be what you want. I just give you a hint. This part applying is assessment. P of A is one third, P of B knowing A is nine over 10. This part is useless actually, because we don't want to compute it actually. We just want to write what this sentence means with A and or B. You have questions about computing the variance of a uh, set of numbers here. So if you want to compute the variance by hand, so this is the data set. The first thing is to center the data set, which means you need to subtract the mean. So what is the mean? It's simply one over the number of values, five values of the sum, three plus nine plus five plus six plus seven. And the mean will be Six. So if we center the data set, so we just subtract six to each of the values. So minus three, three, minus one, zero, and one. So now this set has a mean zero. You see that you have minus three and three, minus one and one and zero. 
for the variance, you need now to square these values. So the square of minus three is nine, the square of three is nine, and one, zero, and one. And then if you want the variance, you just need to compute the mean of the squared centered values. And because you are asked about the population variance, it's actually the just the mean. So you just sum these values and divide by the number of values, so five values. You can compute this typically with Excel. So here you have four values and the function var p gives you the variance of the population. There's also a function var s which gives you the sample variance, not the population variance. So the sample variance is simply you divide by n minus one when you compute the mean at the end, instead of dividing by n, the number of elements. So for the population variance here, you just sum this and divide by five because you have five values. For the sample variance, you would divide by four, n minus one. And then you have a question about the standard deviation. The standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So once you have computed the variance, you just need to take the square root. Again, be careful, here it's the sample standard deviation. So you will divide by n minus one. So typically here you have four values. For the sample variance of standard deviation, you will divide by three and not by four when you compute the final mean. Then you have questions typically about distributions. For instance, the mean and variance of a Poisson distribution. For this kind of question, you can look at Wikipedia. It gives a very nice overview uh, about the distributions. So typically here, the binomial distribution, you have plots of the PMF, the CDF, and also information about the mean, about the variance, and you will find the same information for lots of distributions. Okay, so that's it for mathematics. Good luck. Thank you.